Hey guys, my name is Clay Williams, and today I want to talk to you about doing non-metallic silver. Now, before I even start painting, I want to take reference photos of where my highlights are going to be on this model. So in order to do that, I take the model and I turn it and I look at the reflections on the model and, and, and find a point where I like where the reflections are and where I think they're the most visually interesting on the model. And then I take a photo and I take that photo and I keep it next to me while I'm painting so I can continually reference it while I'm painting. So to begin, take a little bit of white that I have on my palette and I'm gonna sketch out where my highlights are gonna be on this model. So while looking at the photo, I'm referencing where those stark white highlights are going to be. And when we start, I'm just going to do it from this one side, and then we'll worry about the back side here in a little bit. All right, once I have my highlights sketched in, I'm gonna take some of my black, because we're gonna work in grayscale for non-metallic silver. We're gonna add our color a little bit later, because there is color in silver, just a little bit. I'm gonna work from my shadows to my highlights. So my shadow color from my reference photo looks like it runs down the middle of the shoulder pad, so I'm gonna pull out toward my highlight from my shadow area. And the thing to remember while painting non-metallic metals is that the majority of the metal, if it's shiny, is going to be in shadow. The, we use the rule of thirds, so one third of my model is going to be mid-tone to highlight and two thirds of my model is going to be mid-tone to shadow. And I'm going in in between all my highlight areas, working up from where my blacks are, pulling in a little bit of this dark gray because we're just gonna gradient up towards our whites. So I'm in adding a little bit more white to my black here, and I'm just going over the previous layer, moving toward my white. Now as you get toward your white, the less black you have in your paint, the more coats you're gonna need. But for these beginning layers, you're gonna go a little bit faster because that black and that dark gray like to coat quickly. I'm just pulling in from each previous layer, working my way toward my highlight. For the corner of this little shoulder pad, we have sort of a little circle highlight going on in the reference pictures. So I'm just trying to mimic that and pull my highlights toward the, the stark highlight in the middle. I'm just layering toward those highlights. And I'm working out from my paint. So each time I mix a new color, I can see what my previous color was right next to it, and I'm working fairly fast, so I'm not worried about the colors on the palette sort of bleeding into each other over time, because by the time they do that, I'm already going to be done with that color. Now, if you're working on a larger army, you might want to keep your mixes of grays separate so that if you want to go back, you have that option and you have that time. And 
and keeping my shadows pretty, pretty stark and pretty dark in the corners here. All right, and about this point, this is what would be considered the midtone. So you'll see that I've worked most of this area before even getting to my highlight. The highlight's going to be a small, small portion of this model. And so I'm going to go over where I put my whites with my just above midtone gray because it's going to coat better than the white. And as I work it up in tone. It's gonna make it easier for that stark white highlight that we want for that really reflective metal. And make sure to rinse out your brush a lot when you're working with these black and grays because each time you load your brush, it might get a little bit grayed out if there was some black in there because that black pigment's really strong. It likes to be dominant. And again, if I'm working toward highlight, I pull my brush toward the highlight. Because where I pick up my brush, this is where the most amount of paint is going to be deposited on the model. That's where the majority of the paint is going to be left. Going and pulling on the edges just a little bit because we want the edges to flow that light, flare it out. Move them toward our shadow area just a little bit. All right, we are just about to our stark white highlights. Now, I'm actually using the shape of the paint to catch the light. So this is a pretty thick brush load of paint. And that, that bubble of paint actually sticks away from the surface of the model and catches more light, so that white is even brighter. So now that I have my silver sort of developed on this edge, I want to go back to my reference photos, and I want to look at the picture that I took of the back side of the model, because when I take a picture, I only get one side of the model, and I need to make the back not black. I want it to be just as interesting as the front. So. Going in, taking my white, sketching in where these main highlights are developed from my reference photos. And when I say sketching, I mean that I'm going pretty rough with my white. I'm not trying to get it to coat. I'm not putting a thick daub of paint on there either. I'm just kind of using the paint as a secondary reference from my photos. And now that I have that developed, I'm gonna do just what I did on the front, is I'm gonna pull my shadow. Now my shape on the back side is a little bit different. We have a, a higher highlight and a thicker band of white on the back. So I'm not mimicking completely what happened on the front. But since it is relatively the same shape, it's gonna have, um, the object is the same shape, the highlights are gonna have a close look. But again, for the sake of interest, we wanna make sure that we pay attention to uh, shapes and keep those highlights natural yet visually appealing. Now I'm leaving stark black in the middle of the shoulder pad because that's our darkest area. And I'm mixing and layering up. Went a little too bright, step it back down just a bit. And pull in from those shadows. 
Some of these transitions might be a little quick, but go ahead and just put a little bit of paint in that area. Even if you end up covering it all the way up, you might not. And those will give you those uh, illusions of the paint being a little more blended as we layer this up. And it's okay if you have separations between your, uh, your layers because the overall look on the table, and that's what we're looking for, is something to get on the table. It's gonna have that sort of bright silver, silvery metallic look where we get to choose where the light sources come from. Now like I did on the front side, I'm gonna start to cover up my white with my uh, light to mid-tone gray because that's gonna help me coat my white over those areas because if I build up a lighter gray, of course the, uh, the white is gonna go on a little bit easier. Just as if you primed the model in a light gray, it's a lot easier to, white, to paint white than if you try and paint white over a black primed model. But in this case, we needed the black for the, uh, the shadow layers. And since our, uh, since our highlight areas are only a third, we want to make sure that we make it a little bit easier on ourselves and have the dominant color be the, 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 the base color or the dominant tone. Building my mid-tone to highlight up. And we got a really light gray here. Pull a few edge highlights out. And then add our thick white spot highlights in the middle of our reference areas. Now that we have our grayscale developed on the model, I'm gonna add a little bit of color because silver reflects the environment around it. I'm gonna add a little bit of this teal. So a teal is sort of a mixture between blue and green, so it's a color that you kind of see reflected, you know, if this, this guy was standing out in the middle of a field. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water to the paint on my palette until the, the mixture of paint and water kind of pulls in on itself. And then I'm gonna unload my brush. Just like when we dry brush, we wanna make sure we have the right amount of paint on our brush. Test it on my thumb. And then in the mid-tone areas, I wanna add a little bit of this teal. Well, this color is actually uh, falcon turquoise, which is again, close to a teal. It's a blue-green. I'm just barely putting that into the mid-tone areas of the model, where it's reflecting, where it's not bright white highlights and where it's not super dark shadows. And there we have it. After you get done with uh, whichever color you prefer to glaze on, you have a nice silvery looking shoulder pad. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to check out some of the other painting guides on the channel. We'll see you guys next time.